Again, everybody, and welcome to an all new episode of Road Trip After Hours. I'm your host, Mac Davis, along with my WWE Hall of Famer co host, Mr. Teddy Long. Hey, Teddy. Hey, good afternoon there, Mac. How are you doing today, player? I'm doing like shit. Didn't wow. expect that answer at all, did you? No, I did not. <laughs> wow. I'm having a great day, man. I'm having a great day. <laughs> no, nah, you're, you're just trying to make up for all them screw ups you've been doing over, <laughs> over the past weeks. Teddy, have just you, sit back, you... enjoy the moonwalk, will you? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we got a special guest today you got to introduce. Uh, yeah, man, we got my main man, uh, a man that I had the opportunity to travel with in the WWF uh, long then before it even changed over to the WWE. And uh, I rode with this man here for a long, long time. We shared hotel rooms, and we, just, we, we, we did a lot of stuff together, he even... I was one of the people that he even invited to his house to stay in. Nobody had wow. never been in Mike Yoda's house. They'd never spent no time there or nothing. And he invited me to stay a couple of nights at his house and everything. So oh, all the and, hotels uh, must have been booked up then. That must, he must have been forced to do that. <laughs> no, he wasn't forced. He wasn't, the hotels were good. He just said, Teddy, come stay with me. You know what I mean? So well, it was well, maybe, just, maybe, maybe you had the hookup that right. night. Who knows? <laughs> Go ahead, Teddy. Who was it? <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh. I can't I can't help myself, Teddy. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yes. I ain't gonna go any further because you just gonna mess up just screw this up. So right now I'm gonna bring on my main man. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you the WWE's referee of the year, the referee of my childhood. That's what a lot of the fans walk up to him and they say to him when they see him, you were the ref of my childhood. I'm talking about none other than Mike Kyoto. Man, Welcome. what's up, player, player? Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me on the show, Mac. Teddy, good to see you again, brother. Hey, good uh, to see you too, man. And, and talking about one thing with this show called Road Trips After Hours, how many nights have we spend after TV, after TV, <laughs> after show, driving for four hours till four or five in the morning? Well, now, since uh, we're talking about that, Mike, how about telling man. us uh, a story or two about you and Teddy? Because I don't get to hear too many stories with, with Teddy involved. So you got any good ones? Man, you know what? It, if it was like, I felt like I was riding along with Snoop Dogg for kind of a long time, you know. And, <laughs> I wonder why. I wonder why. And, and said he had all the knowledge in the business, man, and and what a mentor he was to me. Uh, Teddy was a referee. He was one hell of a manager. He was general manager. He's done so much in the business. Business. Uh, the man just always dressed sharp. I was just always uh Always got me to the gym in the morning. Always got me to the gym, man. Doing that cardio, cardio, cardio. We had a lot of nice road trips, man. And, um, you know, sometimes we'd have a little bit of a six-pack of Coronas or some lime. I remember Teddy used to like that lime Corona. <laughs> and stuff, <man. laughs> yep. The, or the, and, the uh, lemon, or the I mean, the lime Budweiser's. Yeah. Budweiser light. Yeah, the Budweiser lime or something. Yeah. We used to drink that. And uh, we'd have fun on the road, man, just driving for hours. And I'm telling you, like, after being at TV's, for 12 hours from like noon to like midnight and then you get out and drive for four or five hours how many how many mornings teddy we'd be hearing the birds chirping people oh we'd be to go to work and we're getting we, in we, to get to we'd sleep. be we'd, we'd be checking in some hotels and, and right. the birds are chipping the sun is coming up Ooh, and we're just right. checking in to try to go to bed this right. is like uh six in the morning and we got to be right back up around 10 Okay, yeah. and getting ready to try to go to TV. So I'm back up at 10. I'm making Kyoto get up. Fuck, we got to go oh, to the yeah. gym. Let's go. go you know, because I, I, I felt so much better after I went to the gym and then I went to TV. I had a better day, right. you know, because I know yeah. how stressful it is at that TV sometimes. So, man, you just want to try to be able to relax. And I'll tell you a real good story about me and Mike. You know, I always did the driving. You know what I mean? Right, I didn't worry right. about driving or nothing. So one time, you know, one day that I was just tired. I think we was up around... Uh, it's that little town out of uh, Maryland. Uh, not might have been Salisbury. South, I'm Salisbury, sure. Maryland. Yeah, Salisbury, yeah, Maryland. Yeah, where the water is there. Yep. Okay, Oops. but anyway, yep, Salisbury. It was that town, Ocean and so City. I think we were leaving there, and we was going to New York or somewhere. So I would I didn't say much. So I started driving. So I was getting sleepy. So I finally look over. I said, "Man, I, I got to I got to get some rest." So I get I tell Kyoto, I said, "Come on, you're gonna have to drive." Oh, no problem, Teddy. I'm ready. I'm ready. I got this. I got it. <laughs> so. 
So I get out, I let Kilda drive, and so I finally go off to sleep there. And the next thing I know, I wake up, we're like in a tailspin. We're going off this thing, the, the car's about to flip. I'm like, oh, what is going on? And so Kyoto has, has took this it. exit, and he's doing about 90 miles an hour, and he's getting off of this exit, so he's about to flip. I start screaming at him, get out, get out. <laughs> I got it, I got it. <laughs> Oh man. I'm like, I drive. I got it. I'll drive. Get out. <laughs> Your ass is walking now. <laughs> oh God. Oh man. No. And I also, I told I told him about that story too, Mike. You remember when we was driving that night and they had a, that car accident and we drove up on it and oh, we yeah. saw this dead body. They had it covered yeah. up, but they had the yeah. arm just hanging out, man. Hanging we could out, see the hanging person. out. I, I can see you right now looking at Mike going, I told you, you son of a bitch. See, that's what would have happened. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, if, kinda, I would imagine I Teddy's temper was pretty high back then, too, because Teddy can get a temper when he wants to, right? Yeah, Teddy would fire up. Oh, yeah, when need yeah. be, Teddy will fire up on you. Oh, yes, yeah. that's for sure. <laughs> no shit, boy. But, yeah, it, would, it, it would take a lot to get Teddy to fire up, you know. But <laughs> Yeah, man, yeah, up, it was easy going, fire. man. But, you know, yeah. it's just so much you can take, you know. So, that's you know. Right. <laughs> And then sometimes you have to fire up to let people know, hey, you know, I will be the man now if that's what I got to be. And after, and after days like that of driving till 6 in the morning, getting up, getting to the gym, hurry up the TV, then they got a piss cup waiting for you for 2500 <laughs> Oh, God. Jeez. <laughs> you mean, just can't have any was, fun, can you? Was, oh, man, you were trying. Oh, my God. But uh, the, the other thing, too, Kyoto, uh, well, I, we want to have you on, too, man. Tell us what's going on with you now, man. And, you know, and I know right now, you know, a lot of fans, or a lot of the promoters are requesting you and booking you in different events. So tell us how they can get in touch with you and what's going on with you now. Yeah, I appreciate that. Teddy Edding, reach me at uh, Twitter, at MJC Kyoto. And uh, you can reach me at michael.kyota84 at yahoo.com for bookings and everything. Signing, seminars, and all that. I'm doing signing, seminars. You know, training some refs here and there and, uh, you know, a lot of podcasts, but, uh, you know, um, doing a lot of things, man. I got a documentary going on right now, wow. hopefully with TA Films, at, and they're out of Charlotte. So uh, hopefully um, we've been working on it for a year and we're in talks with, uh, you know, Chris Van Bleet and all that. So um, hopefully everything comes to a close and I can, you know, get this documentary done and get out to uh, a streaming company. Um, doing a lot of other things. Just You do uh, podcasts as well, right? Yeah, I do podcasts, you know, for ad free shows um, and stuff. And uh, with Paulie Bromwell and, you know, Paulie B and Mike C on ad free, man, on uh, every other Monday at Mailbag. We, we, it's been doing for like over three years now and it's doing great. Oh, that's fantastic. And, and we get about 30, 35 questions in every, every time, every, every podcast and all that, you know, Q and A's. And we talk, you know, of course, wrestling and sports and just traveling and food. We talk everything, music to everything you know so it's just um it's been a great time and you know who, who would have thought i'd be doing podcasts three years ago you know when i yeah. had to <laughs> call yeah. me up and say hey you want to do podcasts i'm like podcasts i'm like what <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> but, yeah that, that that's the same way i was mike i didn't care nothing about it until i started talking to mac okay and right. i saw mac i met him earlier and i saw mac he was just doing them by himself you know just the one man one man band Wow. And uh, I never did really pay that any attention. And then I saw Mac, you know, he was just, you know, insisting on doing what he was doing. I'm like, well, fuck, let me let me help this man out here. Maybe I can learn something. And so yeah. that's how I met Mac. And uh, I, now I understand it a lot better than I did. And so that's why I'm just so happy I met Mac. And I'm just happy to be with him and we're doing what we're doing. Yeah, I appreciate the, that. Uh, yeah, it's awesome, man. Thanks for having me on the show, guys. And like, you know, I'm doing a live podcast. Um, It's a. Uh, on the Rock and CM Punk match at WrestleMania. I'm doing one here at um for ad free. We're doing a live one and it's like a watch along, you know. So oh, cool. here at St. Pete's, you know, like we're doing the Friday before the rumble down there near the uh stadium. So, you know, all these podcasts, man, it's just been huge, man. You see certain guys like Pat McAfee and all these other guys now and all these and they're it's blowing up. And it's oh, like, yeah. wow, you know? Yeah. Um, but uh, it's it's been interesting. It's been a lot of fun to be able to tell your stories on the road and all that other stuff, man. It's let just, me, it's let me ask you a quick story, Mike. Uh, considering towards the end of your career, well, it was probably one of your last uh, televised matches was Ric Flair's right. last match. Right. Um, any stories from that uh, particular uh, night and match that you can recall? 
man, I'm just glad that Ric Flair made it all the way through, man. You know, were you so, scared? Uh, because as a viewer, blessed. I was scared for him. So I can imagine yeah. you as the referee, you had to be overly concerned. Um, totally overly concerned, uh, and especially, you know, focused on him. Yes. Um, you know, we had a lot of great talent in the ring. You know, of course, Ric Flair, and you had Jay Lethal that was carrying the match. And, and Jeff, Jeff Jarrett. Jarrett. And, you know, and these guys. And Jeff Jarrett, for his age, he was in pretty damn good shape. And uh, and Andrade, which is a hell of a worker. So, um, you know, I'm just glad my bump worked out at the end. Everything got together near the end. Everything, you know, worked out great, man. So, I mean, it was just you know, a lot of concerns, a lot of ifs. But, um, you know, I know it's a small word, but big meaning. But, you know, we got through the night, man. Everybody in Ric Flair got through the night, man. So, um, you know, everybody was very happy at the end of the night, man. Everybody I had heard that the match didn't quite go as it was planned, uh, that there were some alterations. And I guess that was due to Rick. Is that uh, what it was? Because I had heard that he just wasn't taking in enough fluids during the day. Right. Yeah. Some probably dehydration, you know, and, you know, especially at a certain age or a certain, you know, you get dehydrated a lot quicker than you normally would when you're, you know, 30, 20, yeah. 30, 40, you know, 50. So, I mean, uh, you know, but you know, when I was in the locker room with him that day, he was doing like 75 to 100 squats and certain little bit of time when I was sitting in, you know, in his dress room, we were going over the match and I'm here you know, with his trainer and I'm sitting there going, fuck, I can't do 75 to 100 <laughs> squats. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Period, you know, and I was pretty impressed. So, um, you know, it, it just uh, it went it went well. Um, I was glad to be a part of that match, you know, and stuff like that. It was uh it was the, uh, yeah, one of the most uh, televised matches I've done in the last couple of years, that's for sure. Do you miss the uh, the daily grind at all? Yeah, I, I mean, the daily, you know what, it's weird, you know, and Teddy, you could probably confirm this. You know, when you're on the road too long and you go on those Europe tours and you're going overseas and we're on the road and you're on the road too long, you want to get the hell home. But then when you're home too much, you can't wait to get back out on the road, man, and and that's the only thing weird about these podcasts and doing these seminars and virtuals on the computer. You know, I, I've been home too much. I need to get out. I need to get back out and travel, man. Well, you know, yeah. <laughs> well, you know speaking so, of that, Mike, you know what I mean? Uh, you, I was like that when I first come off the road. You know, I was ready right. to go back to work. But after I come off the road and knew, you know, I wasn't going to have to go back to work, then right. I adjusted, you know, to being at home. And I tell you, man, right. after I got home for a while, I don't want to go nowhere. No, it I, was, I love sleeping in my own bed every night. Yeah, yeah. I love doing what I'm doing now. True. I go do the comic cons. I go do right. the meet and greets of right. the indie shows. And I love doing that. I ain't under no stress. Um, yeah. You know, and I can go back. And so I just love exactly what I'm doing now. And I tell people all the time, when WWE called me, it's a surprise. Right. I, I mean, because I have, I don't even think about them calling me. And then when they do, it's like, oh, shit, what do they want? You know? <laughs> right. So right. it's always a surprise to me. So they, 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 they're they not bothering me by not calling me. No, I hear that. I mean, um, you know, like being on the road for so long, it's an adjustment. I I mean, I know the, the wife wants me out of the house a lot. Fucking <laughs> I like the way you looked over your shoulder just then. <laughs> 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 so I mean I know she wants me out of the house. Sometimes I'd be just going out of the house doing errands just just to do some shit to get out of the house. I, well, I kind of had that I had that too when my wife was alive. Yeah. She was kind of wanting me to get I'm out too, her. but yeah, yeah, when Tasha was yeah, she would like yeah, that too, but woman. like I said, man, it's 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 just been fun being at home yeah. and I look at it a whole different way now. I'm able to train and keep myself in in good shape and you know, yeah. and I ain't all stressed out, but only thing I miss is the paycheck, but I'm all right with oh, that too. Yeah, I hear you. As long <laughs> as you can just live comfortably, that's all right with me too. You know, right? So if they don't so, give me a paycheck, I'm gonna still survive. Yep. And, and so how how did you go about getting called for the Hall of Fame, Teddy? <laughs> did you do well, anything? I, I mean, ready, let me take. Well, I'm ready to I've heard stories. Yo, Trip, what's up, man? Philly's coming. <laughs> <laughs> can you help a brother out? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you this about the Hall of Fame. I got a call from Mark Carana. Now, he right. tells me one of the biggest lies that you could oh, ever tell Lord. somebody. Of he course, calls man. me and he says, oh, Teddy, hey, God, guess what? I said, yeah, what is it, Mark? Uh, you're going to go in the Hall of Fame. So I said, okay. Well, uh, you know, I was in the meeting and we were just sitting around and Vince was saying, God, I wonder who could we put in the Hall of Fame? And, and mm -hmm. I just yelled out, hey, Vince, how about with Teddy Long? He ain't called my name to nobody. No he ain't oh, told Vince shit. to put. If he had been lived up to him, I wouldn't be in the Hall of Fame today. And I Kyoto, 
You were standing right there with me when I asked him about right. my Legends deal, and he looked at me and asked he me, said, you don't yeah. have one? Yeah, you the yeah, guy that give them out. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> what a lying piece of shit. Yeah, I know. When I used to talk to John Cohn, he said, um, he said oh, in his department, there was bonuses. Like Johnny was telling him, what, did you get a bonus last year? Did you get bonuses, right? He goes, what bonuses? He goes, I didn't get no bonus. He's like, Crown is supposed to give you a bonus every year. He was like, I didn't know that. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, yeah, I know, man. Yeah, he, he always tried to put himself over, Teddy, you know. Oh, he yeah. Well, so yeah, he, he, but see, they was he was so dumb till he thought I, I was dumb and he didn't know that I no, knew what I he was doing to me because I knew how to play the game. Yeah, right, come right, telling I me, talk, well, I called your name and Vince said, oh, yeah, yeah, that's that. <laughs> and you know how he was, Mike. My, my, uh, my, you know he told Vince to put me nowhere. I know. He's somewhere here in Tampa. I've yet to run into him yet. I have yet to run into him. Well, if you, yeah, well, you ain't, don't worry about it. Don't waste your time in there. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, we're running out of time. I wish we could go on, but we are about oh, to run out of time here, man. All right. Yeah, yeah. man. And, but I'd love to get you back on at some uh, later time because uh, I know there's a lot of stories we have not talked about. It's more of an introduction kind of, hey, how you doing? But yeah. uh, later down the yeah. line, I would like to get you back on again if uh, you're available. Man, I'd love to be on. I'd love to have you on Teddy's. Man, I'd love to be on Teddy's show, man. Well, yeah. good, man. But that's why I really wanted to get you on too, Mike, so we can keep you relevant and, you know, and let the people know what you're doing now, you know, so they can come out, you know, any bookings or anywhere you're going to be, they can come out to see you. And, uh, you know, I'm going to be in uh, St. Augustine uh, Friday night, so hopefully right. I'll see you there. Yeah, I'm gonna, we're going to try and make it down still. We got I don't know. We, we're, we're debating on something, so I might have to stay okay. a night or two. And have, we got a dog here, so we, then we got to board the dog, so... I we'll brother, see, I got you know. I got a dog too. I just yep, took my dog to the border this morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, once again, Mike Kyoto, he is the referee of your childhood for many people. And of course, he worked for WWE. He is a legend, should be in the Hall of Fame down the line, oh, just like you, Teddy man. and everybody else. I'd like to see a lot more referees get in there as well because they're every bit of part of the business as the guys who are working as wrestlers. So exactly. Yeah, I appreciate that's it. That, We're Mac. out of time. I'm Mac Davis. Right. I'm your host for Road Trip After Hours, along with my WWE co-host, Mr. Hall of Famer, Teddy Long, and our special guest today, Mike Kyoto. Thanks, Mike. One love, boys. Thank you very much, Teddy. Thank you, Matt. <laughs>